Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, continuing to take a look at the next week's slate, heading down to the Big 12 for one of the surprise teams across college football, the West Virginia Mountaineers, the 7-4 West Virginia Mountaineers heading on the road to play Baylor, a chance for West Virginia to get to eight games. And the first thing I want to say is West Virginia fans, we talked about this earlier in the season one. Thank you guys for rocking with the boys way back in the summer. We talked about this team in terms of, I'm going to say a hand up. I didn't think they'd get to seven and four heading into week 12. That being said, this West Virginia team, we said, could be a lot better than most people were giving credit to earlier in the summer months. And that is exactly what Neil Brown has done in an opportunity to go on the road against a struggling Baylor Bears team and get to eight wins. Not many people in the national media had that on their bingo card. Really excited to get into this one. Before we do, just want to say thank you to you guys and a special shout out to the West Virginia fans. We've been talking about this team since the early summer months. You guys always show a ton of love to the boys. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, we'd love to hear from you guys. Picks, predictions, keys to the game. At the end of the day, the best part about doing this is talking ball with you guys in the comment section. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And let's just talk a little bit about what we've seen from West Virginia. Specifically, on the offensive side of the ball, it was no secret heading into this season. And West Virginia wanted to run the football. They, and this is what partially why we were so optimistic about this team heading into the year. A really veteran, experienced, and good offensive line. With the talented backfield, and I, again, I didn't see Jaheim White coming in as a true freshman and being the dog that he is. That is exactly what you saw against Cincinnati last weekend, a 424 rushing yard performance. Jaheim White going for 200 of those. You look at West Virginia on the season now, something we talked about earlier was they're struggling to get that run game going, and that was kind of leading to a lot of struggles on the offensive side of the ball. You look at the season totals now, five yards per carry, on average, 19th best in the country. They run the ball 63% of the time. That is six most, and they're doing it at a high level. And that is kind of the reason this West Virginia offense has taken off in the last couple of weeks. Now, you look at a guy like Jaheim White. You look at a guy like C.J. Donaldson, Garrett Green, who can do it with his legs. Behind an offensive line, I mean, Zach Frazier playing at phenomenally well against that off on that offensive line. Wyatt Millen, you could say the same thing. I think Malone has come in and played really good. You saw West Virginia take it to a Cincinnati team that, albeit not a great football team, a very good rushing defense, and West Virginia just dominated the line of scrimmage, and that is the recipe for this West Virginia team to win games. And when you get that run game going, we said earlier on in the season, we don't need to be an air raid offense at West Virginia. But when we do throw the football, you got to hit those explosive plays. And when you get the run game going, you get the safeties and linebackers sucked in, that play action suddenly becomes a lot more feasible. You look at West Virginia through the air, 17.5 yards per reception. I mean, that is an extremely explosive passing offense. And yeah, what? They only threw the ball 19 times, but averaging 17.5 yards per catch, very good. That's the recipe for West Virginia. Look how they match up against Baylor. Uh, Baylor's off. Baylor's defense, it's been a struggle. I mean, they're giving up 36 points per game. That is 120th in the country. The alarming number, 4.9 yards per carry allowed. That's 110th. This Baylor Bears defense has struggled to stop the run, and they're getting a West Virginia team coming into town that has been one of the best rushing offenses over the last couple of weeks. A massive mismatch and probably the story of the game. We know what West Virginia's recipe to win is, and that is running the football at a high level, and Baylor represents a defense that you can run the football against. And you look at the back end, they're allowing a 66% completion percentage. That's 121st. But more alarmingly, 8.8 .8 yards per pass attempt. That is 126. So they're not exactly clamping down. They're also giving up the explosive play. West Virginia, I think in a prime spot to one, get that run game going, sucking in some linebackers and safeties, and hit that explosive passing attack that we've seen West Virginia really have a lot of success with the last couple of weeks. This matchup for the West Virginia offense looking really good on paper. Now you flip the sides, you look at this Baylor offense, how to stop Baylor's offense. And I think Blake Shapin is a solid quarterback. The offensive line for the Baylor Bears, 
kindly a disaster. It's been really, really porous. Blake Shapin not having a good pocket. They really struggled to run the football. This Baylor offense only runs the ball 43% of the time, which is one of the least in the country. Why do they do that? Because they're only averaging three yards per carry. That is 124th in the country. They struggle to run the football, putting a lot of pressure on that offensive line to be in pass protection, and they're struggling to pass protect for Blake Shapin. If you're West Virginia, you stop the run, you win on first and second down, you're getting that pass rush going. You got one of the best blitzing linebackers in the country in Lee Kogba. I expect West Virginia to try to take it to Baylor on that defensive line because they've really struggled up front, not only getting the run game going, but protecting Blake Shapin as well. And in the back end for West Virginia, I would love to be in the meeting rooms of opposing offenses when they decide to go and attack Beanie Bishop, who's been one of the best cornerbacks in the country. And every time I turn on the tape for West Virginia, offenses are trying to go after Beanie Bishop. He is one of the best cornerbacks in the conference. And for some reason, that's the guy they want to go after. With all the injuries West Virginia has, in the back end, it seems like they're attacking the wrong guy. Beanie Bishop has been arguably, and there's some guys up front. I mean, Lee Kogbo, I think one of the best linebackers in the Big 12. If you were to ask me who's the most impactful player on this West Virginia defense, it's Beanie Bishop. With all the injuries that they've endured in the secondary, to have that rock in the back end. I don't even think he played particularly well against Cincinnati, but he's been so solid for West Virginia game after game, to have that rock on the boundary, the shutdown cornerback, I think it takes so much stress off this West Virginia defense. Beanie Bishop has been awesome. Aubrey Burks looked really good against Cincinnati. This West Virginia defense, and partially why I think West Virginia is having so much success, they're playing a very good brand of complementary football. And you never see that across the country, right? When West Virginia's offense is cooking, maybe the defense has a tougher game. But when that West Virginia offense in the beginning of the year was struggling, the West Virginia defense was really picking them up. And you're seeing that complementary football lead to a lot of wins. This West Virginia team, again, I was high on them heading into the year. I didn't think they'd be 7-4 and four, aiming for an 8-4 and four finish at going into Week 12. And that's exactly what we're looking at. Neil Brown, a guy I was very critical of, of heading into the year, saying he needs to get at least six wins, or I don't think his tenure at West Virginia is done. One of the best coaching jobs that I think you see across the country. Because this West Virginia team had some holes in their depth chart and roster, and they've dealt with a lot of injuries. And Neil Brown has gotten the very most out of this team, a really impressive, impressive season for West Virginia. You're looking to get to that eighth win, get to a bowl game, and ride this momentum heading into the offseason. I think this this could be a massive building block. And you'll have some casual fans that are, well, what does it matter if they finish 7-5 and five or 8-4? and four? To finish 8-4, and four, go to a bowl game, potentially win that bowl game, have a nine-win season, gives you so much momentum heading into next year. You talk about putting a building block together. This season's a building block for Neil Brown in his time at West Virginia. Massive opportunity for the Mountaineers to continue the momentum get some confidence going into the offseason. You know he's going to get active in the transfer portal. This West Virginia team, special this year. I think out outperformed almost everybody's expectations, including myself, and I was one of the highest people, I think, on West Virginia heading into the year. What a season for the Mountaineers. They look to finish it strong against Baylor. We'll close it out on that. Again, appreciate you guys. And again, a special shout-out to the West Virginia fans. You guys have shown a ton of love to the boys. Can't thank you guys enough. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.